When we physicists look in outer space for alien life, we don't look for little green men. We look for type 1, type 2, and type 3 civilizations. A type 1 civilization has harnessed planetary power. They control earthquakes, the weather, volcanoes. They have cities on the ocean. Anything planetary, they control. That's type 1. A type 2 civilization is stellar. They've exhausted the power of a planet, and they get their energy directly from their mother star. They just don't get a suntan on a weekend. They use solar flares. They use the power of the sun itself to energize their huge machines. Eventually, they exhaust the power of a star, and they go galactic. They harness the power of billions of stars within a galaxy. Now, for example, Buck Rogers would correspond to a type 1 civilization, a planetary civilization. Star Trek and the Federation of Planets, who have colonized the two star systems, would correspond to a type 2 system. And the empire of Star Wars would correspond to a type 3 civilization. Now, what are we on this scale? We are type 0. We don't even rate on this scale. We get our energy from, not from stars or galaxies, we get our energy from dead plants, oil and coal. But we can calculate when we will attain type 1 status, in about 100 years. Now, every time I read the newspaper, I see evidence of this historic transition from type 0 to type 1. And I am privileged to be alive in the most important era in the history of the human race, the transition from type 0 to type 1. I read the newspaper and I see evidence of this everywhere. What is the European Union? The European Union has been formed to oppose NAFTA, that is the United States, Canada and Mexico. But why? Because we're seeing the beginnings of a type 1 economy. Huge planetary trading blocks are the beginnings of a type 1 economy. And what language will this type 1 economy speak? Everywhere I go around the world, I find that the elites, the elites all speak English as a second language. In the future, the planet Earth will be like that. Everyone will speak their own native language, but on top of that, there will be a type 1 language, probably English. There's also going to be a type 1 culture and a type 1 political system as well. You can go anywhere on the planet Earth and show people pictures of two individuals that are instantly recognizable by any human, Madonna and Arnold Schwarzenegger. In other words, we're talking about Hollywood movies. We're talking about rock and roll, rap music, blue jeans. That's going to be the planetary culture of the planet Earth. And what is the internet? The internet is the beginning of a type 1 telephone system. That's all it is. And so this transition is perhaps the most important transition of all time. Some people don't want it. They fear this transition because this transition is to a planetary civilization tolerant of many cultures. These are the terrorists. The, in their gut, they fear this because they know they are witnessing the birth pangs of the beginning of a new planetary civilization and the terrorists want nothing to do with it. This transition is also the most important because it's not clear if we're going to make it. When we look at outer space, we see no evidence of type 1, 2, or 3 anywhere. No evidence whatsoever. The mathematics say that there should be thousands of type 1, 2, and 3 civilizations in the galaxy. We see no evidence of any whatsoever. And why is that? Because the transition from type 0 to type 1 is the most dangerous of all transitions. We may not make it. It's a race against time. On one hand, we have the forces of integration, the forces of tolerance, a multicultural fabric emerging before our eyes. On the other hand, we have weapons of mass destruction, germ warfare, nuclear warfare, also the rise of international terrorism. They are obstacles to reaching a type one civilization. So in other words, perhaps they didn't make it in outer space. If one day we have starships and visit other star systems, perhaps we'll find planets whose atmospheres are irradiated or whose atmospheres are too hot to bear life because they did not make the transition from type 0 to type 1. 
Now, by the time you're type 2, you are immortal. Nothing known to science can destroy a type 2 civilization. Even a supernova cannot destroy a type 2 civilization. They'll either move their home planet or they'll simply stop the nuclear fires from exploding. And by the time a civilization becomes galactic, they may in fact have the ability to control the fate of the galaxy itself. By the way, if you're type 3, you will explore the galaxy not by sending Captain Kirk on an enterprise hopping from star system to star system. That would take millions of years to explore the Milky Way galaxy. The way you do it is you would create a robot. Have the robot land on a moon. It would create a factory. It would make millions of copies of itself on this moon, which is quite stable, and send these to other moons. Then each of these would create another factory. Starting with one robot, you would have a million, then a million, million, and a million, 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 until you had a sphere expanding near the speed of light containing trillions of these robots. They would land on a moon and simply wait. Wait for a type zero civilization to become type one. Now, where have you seen that before? This is the basis of the movie 2001. The movie 2001 is perhaps the most authentic rendition of the encounter of a type zero civilization with a type three civilization. Now at the beginning of the movie, Stanley Kubrick interviewed many leading astronomers and scientists, and we laid out this scenario that the most efficient way to colonize a galaxy is to send robots, have them land under the moon, and create a factory, and then they would shoot out and colonize other moons. But at the last minute, Kubrick cut the first five minutes of his own film, and the film became super mystical. But the next time you see that movie, realize that the monolith on the moon is perhaps a remnant of a passing type three civilization waiting for our type zero civilization to become type one. And how long before we have an operating moon base capable of detecting such a monolith? Perhaps a hundred years. So again, the generation now alive and our grandchildren are the most important generations ever to walk the surface of the earth. We are the generations that will determine whether we make the transition from type zero to type one or we destroy ourselves because of our arrogance and our weapons.